Hey y'all, it's Matt, your Average Gamer. Today we've got a crazy video where we rank the top 20 overpowered builds in Elden Ring. This is one of the biggest videos I've ever done, and it even includes a cameo of another Elden Ring creator later in the video. Every single one of these builds is at rune level 150, and all footage is on New Game Plus 7, the max scaling of the game. Before we jump in, be sure to check out the links in the description for some discounts and ways to support the channel. At number 20 we have the Envoy's Longhorn, an incredible holy weapon that is a dragon destroyer. This is one of my favorite weapons in the game, and the Ash of War scales purely with your fate stat. The only reason this is at 20 is due to holy being so resisted in the endgame. This is one of the most fun weapons an Elden Ring has to offer, and I recommend trying it out and taking on some larger bosses for massive bubble damage. This is an absolute destroyer of some of the big and large bosses in Elden Ring, as they get hit with all of the bubbles, and it can do posture damage too. Pump up your faith and you're going to get a ton of damage out of these bubbles and also keep in mind that since they run similar stats and scaling on the Ashes of War you can switch at any time from the Envoy's Longhorn to the Blasphemous Blade by switching up Talismans in your tier. Normally this boss fight for me does not get to phase 2 with the Envoy's Longhorn. I just had a little bit of difficulty with the RNG and where I initially set up and started at but overall on New Game Plus 7, 40,000 damage to plus 2 sacks in total is around 30,000 HP, all with bubbles. And down goes the big dragon and there's 714,000 runes but we're not leveling up anymore. We have Envoy's Longhorn plus 10, Erdtree Seal plus 10. The Envoy's Crown will boost this by 15%. We have the Shard of Alexander, Sacred Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Ritual Shield Talisman, Faith Tier, Holy Tier. We're going to jump into stats now for this build. Now, if you're running the Ashes of War and we're using Golden Val and Hal of Shabriri, you can run this same setup and also use the Blasphemous Blade when you're two-handing the weapon. We have 60 Vigor, 20 Strength, 80 Faith. This is also on my most recommended builds to try list. You've seen this in a lot of my videos before. I definitely recommend if you're a faith build trying out the Envoy's Longhorn. Next up here we have at 19, Moonvale. I wanted to put Moonvale higher, but unfortunately it has a drop off on New Game Plus and beyond. It's a relatively big drop off. It's still a reliable weapon that does poise damage, physical damage, and magic damage. This is also an early game weapon for many as you can grab it and Kaelid right basically from the start of the game by taking on that Magmorm who's not too difficult. This one can carry you in your first playthrough from the beginning of the game all the way through the end game. Split your stats between dexterity and magic for good damage and focus on charge hits to get in some posture breaks as well. This has the ability to posture break with those charged attacks and it's decent at doing so. There was actually a posture break at the end there, but he ended up being defeated by that time. On New Game Plus 7, all bosses will have around 30% more posture. Let's jump into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have Moonvale Plus 10. Any seal will do. In this case, it really doesn't matter. We're just using it for buffs. The Spellblade Set, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Shield Talisman. We have the Magic Tier, Faith Tier for buffs. Let's jump into stats. Now for stats on this one, we have 40 Dexterity, 40 Intelligence, we have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, and 25 Endurance. We're using Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength for our buffs. Keep in mind the Spellblade set in which I'm wearing currently will increase the Beam part and only the Beam part by 8%, but that's still a pretty good add to the build. And the next one we have up here at number 18 is Bloodhound's Fang. Bloodhound's Fang is one of the more reliable weapons in Elden Ring. This is a great one to build around and is an all-around awesome choice for beginners as well as longtime players. You can grab this one early in Limgrave and it can also carry you. Add any grease or weapon buff to this weapon to add in more damage and Bloodflame Blade is amazing with this because you end up with 95 bleed. Between that and the invincibility frames the Ash of War has, Bloodhound's Finesse, you'll be cruising through the majority of bosses in the game. Give this one a try for the fun ash and get creative with the weapon buffs. You can use all sorts of different greases and different buffs, faith buffs, whatever you want to add to it. Blood Flame Blade obviously is probably the best one, but keep in mind there's a lot of versatility there. An epic weapon, no doubt, and we're able to get a posture break. By the way, it's going to show that I have different armor here. I was messing around with different things during the Godric fight, so I'm going to show what I normally run for Bloodhound's Fang here. And for equipment, we have Bloodhound's Fang, preferably plus 10, any seal because it's for buffs. I had the Knight's Calvary set on, which I run normally, with the White Mask occasionally, Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Ritual Swords Talisman, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier, jump into stats for this one. 
And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 26 Endurance, over 50 Strength when we're two-handing it. You probably only need 34 Strength, 55 Dexterity, 60 if you run Melissa's Prosthesis, and then we have 25 Faith with the Faith tier. And we have Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Blood Flame Blade for our buffs with the Bloodhound's Fang build. And the next one up here we have at number 17 is Double Slash. Double Slash is likely now a better option than the Rivers of Blood. The Rivers of Blood has been nerfed close to five times, so Double Slash on a Nagakiba, which I like for the extra range, is an excellent choice to take on bosses. This is a popular pick, and for good reason, as Keen Affinity with Blood Flame Blade can turn this into easy mode. Another good one to build around, and you can even throw in another Katana in your offhand with Chilling Mist for a fun and good setup. On this list, people ask me about my personal favorite builds. This one is definitely in the top five. I enjoy Double Slash. It's a nice change up, does good bleed and damage. We have the Nagakiba and Keen Affinity with Blood Flame Blade. Any seal will do for buffs. White Mask, Shard of Alexander, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Rotten Wing Sword, Signia, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. Let's talk about stats. Remember, if you ever need to pause anything, feel free to pause it. It probably helps because I do go through these relatively quickly. We have 60 Vigor, 75 Dexterity. We're using Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and Blood Flame Blade for our buffs. At number 16, we have Wild Strikes on the Rusted Anchor. This is an awesome weapon to build on successive hits, and it works great in Heavy Affinity as well as Blood Affinity. This is a good choice for counter damage too, as the Rusted Anchor does pierce damage, the dragon here vanishes fairly fast to the power of the Rusted Anchor and Wild Strikes. You can actually run the Spear Talisman with this too, and I believe it will help you, it will work and proc sometimes. For me personally, I just can't keep seem to get the Spear Talisman to work enough times, even when you're doing counter pierce damage, but maybe that's just me. Let's jump into equipment for this awesome build and setup, and one of my favorite ones. Here we go. For equipment, we have the Heavy Rusted Anchor with Wild Strikes. Any seal will do for buffs. You can check out the armor set there. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Urtree's Favorite Plus 2. We have the Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. Let's talk about stats for this build. So you really only need 54 strength if you're two-handing it, and you can put a bunch more points back into Endurance and Mind, but I was using Bloodhound's Claws for another build, and I wanted to save some Larval Tiers, and also so that I can single-hand the weapon as well. And we have 60 Vigor and 75 Strength for this build. We're using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength for our buffs. And as you were able to see before with the Dragon, this build can do a lot of damage. At number 15, we have Bloodhound's Claws, but you can put any of the Claws in this spot. They've all been good since the 1.08 buff to them, and they're a reliable choice for bleed and successive attack damage. These particular claws are excellent in heavy affinity, giving you a strength option that's also really fast. Piercing Fang or Impaling Thrust are fun ashes to put on these for some poise damage and the occasional big hit. Be sure to try these out, and keep in mind you can use many buffs with them. Many of the weapon buffs in the game you can use with claws, and you end up with around 100 bleed in total when you add in Blood Flame Blade, which is a lot of bleed and very quick buildup on a fast weapon. And I get hit probably more times than I should have, but we're going to move in closer to the Magmorm here. We're going to build up on successive attack damage and get some bleed procs too. The Magmorm is actually incredibly slash resistant, so there's a good amount of damage here even with that. So given that he has decent resistances, especially against physical damage and whatnot, we're able to absolutely shred his HP on New Game Plus 7. Again, it's just the Magmorm after all, but even so, just shows the power of claws. For equipment, we have Bloodhound's Claws, plus 25 preferably. Any seal will do because we're using it for buffs. We have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Ritual Sword, Salisman, Listen's Prosthesis, Rotten Wing Sword, Insignia, Thorny Tier, Fate Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor and 75 Strength. You can do the Wild Strikes build with the same exact identical stats. We have 25 Endurance. We're using Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and then we're adding in Blood Flame Blade to get that 100 Bleed for our buffs and do a lot of damage. At number 14, we have Frost and Bleed. This class is well outclassed by Bleed and Bleed, but it is the more fun option in my opinion. It's overpowered, but not to the degree of a dual Seppuku Bleed build, and seeing yourself get the Frost and Bleed proc at the same time can add up for a massive jump attack build. This is one that I suggest using if you like Bleed options, but find them too easy, as it changes it up just enough to keep it an overpowered but fun build. By the way, the sleeping pots end up making this a little bit easier, but we're taking the Godskin Duo on on New Game Plus 7, and for the last part of the fight, I'm not going to use the sleeping pots, but overall, I was impressed with the damage between the Frost and the Bleed. You can get a ton of procs and a ton of successive attack damage as well. 
This one would definitely be another suggested build for me too. I think I already mentioned that once, but yeah, it's a lot of fun to run it this way as opposed to bleed. Bleed could be a little less boring and it gives you a nice frost addition to the build. It makes it a little bit more versatile and fun. Let's jump into equipment here in a second for this awesome build and setup that does a lot of damage. And we're gonna jump into equipment here. We have two scavenger curve swords, one on a Colt with Seppuku, one in Cold Affinity with Chilling Mist. Any seal will do, but the Dragon Communion seal works. White Mask, Claw Talisman, Raptor's Black Feathers, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tear, Fate Tear. Now for stats, I'm running these on the Scavenger because it gives me a lot of leeway with my other stats, and I don't have to split stats, which Blood Affinity will cause you to do. So for this, we have 60 Vigor, 70 Arcane, and then we have 20 Mind, 26 Endurance, Golden Valve, Flame Grip, and Strength are our buffs. Next up at number 13 is the Reduvia Bloodblade build. So I'm not a dagger person, as the shorter reach for me is outclassed by curved swords and twin blades, but Bloodblade is amazing. It does a lot of damage, it gives you a ranged bleed option, and it's reliable too. You can easily spam it, and on the Reduvia, unlike the Ash version, you won't lose any HP. Try this one out if you're looking for a bleed option that makes you think about what your next attack may be. And this is definitely another one to try out too. I recommend this if the jump attack bleed builds are a little bit too easy for you and more got completely vanished to the power of the Reduvia and Bloodblade. In a second here, we're gonna jump into equipment for this one. And for equipment, we have two Reduvias, preferably plus 10. We're using the Dragon Communion Seal, White Mask. We have part of the Scaled Set On, Shard of Alexander, Ritual Swords Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thority Tier, Fate Tier. That's Margaret Shackle, the item by the way. Let's jump into stats. And for stats here, we have 60 Vigor, 45 Dexterity, and 45 Arcane. A lot of people ask me about that item, by the way, that Margaret Shackle is the item that can stun the boss. You get it from Patches in the Ravine in the Gill Lake. For this, we're using Golden Val and Flame Grammy Strength for our buffs. At number 12, we have the Giant Crusher. Now, for this video, we mostly stuck to two buffs in the tier, but you can buff up this weapon to one-hit a lot of the different bosses and enemies in Elden Ring. That being said, even with minimal buffs, it's still overpowered as just the two buffs that I was using had me hitting close for 5,000 damage on each charged attack with Royal Knight's Resolve. This is one I absolutely recommend for strength builds as it has become a staple weapon for its absurdly high AR. By the way, that is not Lion's Claw, that is the unique R2 flip that the Giant Crusher has. A lot of people ask me questions about that, it's just the way the charged attack is. You can put Lion's Claw on the weapon, it'll be quite good, but yeah, that charged attack is a special flip and it does a lot of damage. I've actually seen people in PvP go to use that and they end up having Lion's Claw on the weapon. I think it was an attempt to trick me at one point. I remember playing against somebody that did that to me and they ended up winning. Anyways, let's jump into the equipment for this awesome strength build and setup. After we uh, heal up here, of course, and for equipment, we have the Giant Crusher and Heavy Affinity with Royal Knight's Resolve. Any seal for buffs, we have the Raptor's Black Feathers on, Claw Talisman, Ritual Swords Talisman, Axe Talisman. We have Eritrea's Favorite Plus 2. We have the Spike Crack tier, Fate tier. Let's jump into stats. It's the only one I didn't hit 51 poise, and that's just because I wasn't respecking for the strength builds. But for this, you would really only need about 54 strength, so you can put some points back into endurance and mind. We have 60 vigor. We have 25 faith with the faith tier. We're using golden vow and flame grammy strength. And that's due to the 1.5 times two-handing bonus you get for uh, strength weapons. That's awesome. Anyways, the next one up here is Ice Spear at number 11. One of my favorite Ashes of War in the entire game of Elden Ring, and it has really not let me down lately. I've been using this a ton. And for this one, we're going to be taking on Godfrey. Ice Spear has become one of my favorite Ashes, as I just mentioned, not only because the damage is great, but because it scales with both Dexterity and Magic, which means you can go in Keen or Magic Affinity and get awesome damage with this Ash of War. This also combos perfectly with the Guardian Sword Spear, one of Elden Ring's most versatile weapons, a top choice to pair with this, by the way. Give Ice Spear a try if you're looking for a cold playstyle that'll have you hitting for thousands of damage in between frost procs and posture damage. This build is a win. Most of the bosses won't even be too much of a challenge when you're using a build like this. Ice Spear has really been reliable for me lately. I've been using this Ash of War on a whole bunch of different weapons. I absolutely love it on the Guardian Sword Spear. You can see the posture break there, by the way, and then the fact that you can proc frost and the pure magic damage. It's just awesome. Yeah, this is no doubt one you're definitely going to want to try. By the way, I end up getting hit here, but this should have been a no-hit. This was just me being incredibly greedy. It was very easy to defeat him at the end of that point because he has a long window afterwards. But anyways, try this one on Keen or Magic Affinity for awesome damage. It will not let you down. This Ash of War is 
fantastic and one I'm using a lot lately. Let's jump into equipment for this one. After we grab this grace so that I don't forget and I can travel back here at some point if I want to take on the final boss. For equipment we have the Guardian Sword Spear and Magic Affinity. We're using Ice Spear. Any staff, any seal will do. You can check out the armor set there. We have the Shard of Alexander, we have the Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Ritual Shield Talisman, Faith Tier, Magic Tier, let's jump into stats for this awesome setup. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 60 Intelligence, we got to 33 Faith with the Faith Tier so we can add some buffs, we have 23 Mind, 20 Endurance, we're using Golden Vow, Hal Shapiri, and Terra Magica for our buffs. Currently in, this, in the game, this is probably my favorite Ash of War. I know I mentioned that a few times, but it truly is. Try this one out for sure. Next one up we have is Marius Executioner Sword at number 10. Originally I had this ranked in the top 5, but much like the Giant Crusher, it's best when buffed up like crazy. This weapon is still overpowered and good as it builds on successive attacks and it is chargeable, but it takes a while to use the Ash Charged. Seriously, and Loretta actually it beats me up here because I don't actually fight Loretta that much, so uh, yeah, she's a little bit of a pain here. Anyways, um, as far as the charge attack, it basically takes as long as a fully charged Agent Dragon Lightning Strike. It has a very long wind-up window, but as you can see here, when the damage hits, it is good damage and it does build up on successive hits. When running a build for this, I've had more than a few comments of people telling me that the weapon is incredibly slow and it actually belongs outside of the top 5. I finally listened to feedback and I do agree, it is a little bit on the slow side and for New Game Plus 7, it just does take a little bit too much to get the charge attack going. But again, lots of damage there as you can see on screen. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have Marius Executioner Sword, plus 10, any seal will do. We have a random set of armor on. We have 51 poison, most of these. Shard of Alexander, Godfrey Icon, Rotwing Sword, Signia, Melissa's Prosthesis, Faith Tier, Thorny Tier, let's jump into stats. For stats, is they strengthen arcane weapon. When we're two-handing this weapon, we're getting the 60 strength and 45 arcane. We have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 25 Endurance. 60 Vigor, by the way, in most of these builds, too, based on feedback. And then we have Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength for our two buffs for running for this one, and we're using the tier as well. At number 9, we have a tie, and the first one up here is Comet Azure, followed by Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. Comet Azure works best on certain bosses in the game, like those that have at least a 2-3 to three second window before they attack. The damage is almost on match, but you're mostly taking down non-moving targets, as getting the spell off against faster opponents is too often difficult and not really worth it. This is one that can disappear some of the bosses in the game, though, in seconds, which makes it well worth running as a mage. The damage is absolutely incredible, no question about it, but you are limited. The faster bosses in the game, Common Desert can be really challenging to pull it off on them. Now for this one, we're going to jump into equipment. Now this is what I had on this character, but I would go for Lucette's staff here and the Jellyfish Shield. You can also get Azur's Glintstone Crown for more damage, and then Graven Mass Talisman, Graven School Talisman, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, the Infinite FP Tier, Magic Tier. Let's talk about stats. For this, by the way, we're using Common Azure, or Common Azure, however you say it, and we have Terra Magica. We have 60 Vigor, 25 Bind, 20 Endurance, we have 70 Intelligence. As, as you were able to see on screen earlier, we were able to do massive damage to Commander Neal. It's an easy way to take him out if you're a mage. The other one that tied with Common Azure is Agent Dragon Lightning Strike. This one can be buffed up like crazy, but even if you elect for a simple build like the one I'm showing off here, big bosses will vanish in seconds, only using two buffs and the Jellyfish Shield. Radon didn't stand much of a chance in the end, and this is one to try if you're struggling with the Fire Giant or any of the Dragons, the majority of which take increased lightning damage. By the way, the Godfrey icon no longer works with this build. It has been patched out. We were able to get 12,000 damage on the first cast, and we're not even doing anything too crazy here. We actually got hit. We weren't low health proccing, so the second time we had low HP, but we weren't using the Red Feather Branch Sword. Anyways, in a second here, we're going to go over equipment and everything. Overall, definitely the Comet Azura of Faith builds, no question about that. It's an absolute nuke when you're able to get it to hit for a lot of damage, but there is some RNG. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have the Gravel Stone Seal and the Jellyfish Shield. Any armor set, we have 51 Poise, Flox Canvas Talisman, Lightning Scorpion Charm, Ritual Sword and Shield Talisman, Faith Tier, Lightning Tier. Let's jump into stats. By the way, I like running the 20 Strength. That way, I have enough to two-hand it. You probably need, I think, at least around 16 so you can switch to the Blasphemous Blade build or the Envoy's Longheart build. Either one. We're using Golden Val, Hal Shapiri, and Ancient Dragon Lightning Strike. We have 60 Vigor and 70 Faith for this awesome build and setup. In number 8, we have one of the most reliable combinations in Elden Ring, Guts Greatsword and Lion's Claw. This is an awesome combo that will carry you from the beginning of the game until the end, and it's one of my most recommended builds ever. 
It turns the game into easy mode, and you'll be doing massive damage as well as posture breaking frequently. This is one you should try if you're ever having a hard time. Fire and Heavy are perfect affinities for this build. Yeah, this and Ice Spear are two of the most reliable ones in the game in terms of consistency and the ones that you least have to go crazy and buff along with bleed builds, of course. We're going to jump into equipment for this awesome build and set up here in a second. Gotta love Lion's Claw and Guts Greatsword. For equipment, we have Guts, Greatsword, and Heavy Affinity with Lion's Claw. Any seal will do because we're using it for buffs. Check out the armor set there. Shard of Alexander, Ritual Sword Talisman, Ritual Shield Talisman. We have the Earth Tree's Favorite Plus 2. We have the Green Burst Crystal Tier, Fate Tier. Let's talk about stats. For stats on this one, again, you probably only need 54 strength if you're just going to two-hand it. If you single-hand it, you can go with these stats. But we have 25 endurance. You can put some points back into that. 60 vigor, 21 mind, golden vow, and flame grammy strength for our buffs. In number 7 we have Mogwin's Sacred Spear, which does massive fire and bleed damage. This weapon is so good that this clip will barely give me any time to talk about how good it is. Let the results speak for themselves and grab this after you defeat Moog. This weapon is absolutely absurd. The range, the fire damage, the bleed, it's just stupid good. The only downside to the weapon itself is that you have to stand there the entire time, but most of the time whatever you're fighting is just going to disappear. Anyways, let's jump into equipment after that quick clip. And for equipment, we have Mogwin Sacred Spear plus 10, Dragon Communion Seal, because it scales with Arcane. We have the White Mask, Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Faith Tier, Fire Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, we have 40 Strength and 45 Arcane, but keep in mind the Ash is mainly Arcane. We have 60 Vigor, we're using Golden Vow and Flame Grammy Strength. By the way, I wrote a script for this video. If it came out better and you like the ideas of me writing scripts in the future, be sure to comment that below. By the way, for this next clip, we have a special cameo clip here. Let's jump into it. What's going on guys, Pastor Gaines here, and Matt was kind enough to let me sit in on one of his builds, so we're going to go through the Death Poker build. This weapon is deceptively good, even though it only has a descaling in intelligence, the Ash is going to scale entirely with intelligence alone, providing a ridiculous amount of frost and magic damage as you've just seen. We're going to be wrapping this build up with everything you're going to need in order to do a ridiculous amount of damage. As you can see from this particular fight, the Misbegotten Warrior was no match, and the Crucible Knight has absolutely melted underneath the immense magic power of the Death Poker's Ash of War. This is an absolutely phenomenal weapon, very fun to use in the game. It has two separate attacks when it comes to his Ash of War. The first is a charged R2, and the second is a regular light attack after you activate the Ash. An absolutely phenomenal build, doing a ton of damage. Now let's go ahead and jump into the gear. For the build, you're using the Death's Poker. You're also going to be using the Golden Order Seal and the Carrion Regal Scepter. You're going to have the entire Spellblade set on for that extra damage for your Ash of War. You're going to be using the Shard of Alexander, the Magic Scorpion Charm, the Ritual Sword Talisman, and the Ritual Shield Talisman. And you'll also use the Magic Shroud and Crack tier, as well as the Faith Knot Crystal tier. You are going to be buffing up with Terra Magic, a Howl of Shabriri, and Golden Vow, and your Vigor is going to be 60, 22 Mind, Endurance is 28, Strength is 16, Dexterity is 17, Intelligence is 60, Faith is 33, and Arcane is 11. Absolutely phenomenal magic build. Hope everybody enjoyed that drop-in from Pastor Gains Games, and at number 5 we have Dark Moon Greatsword. This is a staple for the franchise, appearing in the Dark Souls series as the Moonlight Greatsword. The Ash scales purely with intelligence, so you don't have to put too much into strength as far as the weapon goes. You could even boost this damage further with the Jellyfish Shield, and it's a fantastic low FP option. Yes, it's something that you're going to want in your arsenal if you're a mage or a battle mage. I know some people would call it a battle mage, but even so, even if you're running a mage build, because of the fact that it has such excellent intelligence scaling on its Ash of War and the beams do posture damage and pure magic damage, it's a great option for mages and battle mages. It is chargeable too, even though I do forget to charge it sometimes, but even when the beam comes out quick, it does a lot of damage. We have the Dark Moon Greatsword, preferably plus 10. Any staff, any seal will do. We have the Spellblade set on, because it will boost that Ash of War. We have the Shard of Alexander, Magic Scorpion Charm, Godfrey Icon, Ritual Swords Talisman. We have the Magic Tier, Faith Tier. Let's talk about stats. For the stats on this one, I like to buff this, so we have Golden Val, Hal Shabiri, and Terra Magica, so 2 buffs plus Terra Magica. We have 60 Vigor, 22 Mind, 20 Endurance, 60 Intelligence, 33 Faith for a well-rounded and powerful Dark Moon Greatsword build. And number 4, I'd like to put a whole class of weapons here, and that is Twin Blades. Twin Blades are lower on the list for me than Curved Swords, especially at metal levels. For this one, though, we're using the Gargoyles Twin Blade with Seppuku on each. 
And I think the Gargoyle's Twin Blades will edge out the other ones. I've tested every Twin Blade and Curve Sword at this point. They're so similar. So many of them are so similar, and they all do a lot of bleed. Let's jump into equipment for this one. For equipment, we have two Gargoyle's Twin Blades with Seppuku. We have Blood Affinity. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, White Mask. We have the Raptor's Black Feathers, Claw Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Ritual Swords Talisman, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, the Faith Tier for buffs, the Thorny Tier. Let's talk about stats for this build. First stats, this is Strength and Arcane. So we have 40 Strength and the Soft Cap of 45 Arcane. We went for 60 Vigor. We've done that with most of these builds. 22 Mind, 25 Endurance. And then for our buffs, we're using Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength to get even more damage. At number three, we have my favorite meta level curve sword, and that's the scavenger curve swords. The reason I like these so much is because we don't have to split any stats, and we can instead focus on arcane and get to 60 vigor. This gives us great damage on a cult, while also allowing us to have room to move our stats around. If you're wondering why I cap most things at 150, about a third of my audience, and I pulled this, does PvP. This gives them the option to respect back at any time from an overpowered PvE option to a PvP build. This is a great challenge for me on New Game Plus 7 as well. When I recently played on a character with max stats, it ended up being way too easy. I mentioned this to a couple of people that asked me about it. I had 80 in each stat. I think I was around level rune level 480 i believe and each stat had at least 80 and then i had 60 vigor and all that and i had like 50 endurance and a ton of mind and it was just simply too easy to run at near max level by the way if you hung around to this point be sure to sub as you're going to be joining in an amazing community check the pinned comment for the discord too or you can ask me any questions you have about elden ring builds this fight ended up being a little bit of a challenge. Keep in mind, on New Game Plus 7, he has 64,000 HP, so that's a lot to get through. But even with that said, the first couple of hits, we got 22,000, and then we consistently continued to do damage to him with the Scavenger Curve Swords. Good bleed buildup and good damage in between procs. This is definitely one of my favorite builds, too. You've seen me run the Scavenger Curve Swords a lot. I've actually used them in all different types of affinities. The Bandit Curve Swords are more versatile in other affinities, though. As far as the occult damage, though, for the Scavenger Curve Swords and the amount of innate bleed scaling you get with the Arcane is just absolutely awesome. In a second after we get rid of these fireballs, we're going to be jumping into equipment and stats. I think that was one try on the Fire Giant, too. He's not too tough. Once you get used to him, he's more intimidating than anything else. And here, we're going to go over equipment for this awesome build and setup. For equipment, we have two Scavenger Curve Swords on a Colt with Seppuku. We're using the Dragon Communion Seal. We have the White Mask, Raptor's Black Feathers, Claw Talisman, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Melissa's Prosthesis, Thorny Tier, Faith Tier. Let's jump into stats. And for stats, we have 60 Vigor, 20 Mind, 26 Endurance. We have 70 Arcane. We're on a Cult Affinity, so that's giving us a lot of damage. We're using Gold and Val and Flame Grant Me Strength for our buffs. By the way, out of all these builds, be sure to comment below which one's your favorite. And if there's any builds you'd like to see, comment that too. And at number two, we have Night Comet. Now, I had a really hard time ranking the last two, as I love both in the top spot. First, we have a Glass Cannon Night Mage, where we'll be facing Melania on New Game Plus 7. Now you probably know what the number one spot is, and if you're wondering why I moved it, it's simply because the latter heals you while Night Comet is just outright good. As for the Glass Cannon Mage here, we have Faith buffs, 40 Vigor, and 80 Intelligence at 150. Melania takes between 2 to 4,000 damage per hit. This is quite impressive, and she ultimately took me around 4 attempts. That's a testament to the build itself and not my average skill level. She doesn't see Night Comet, so you can hit her often without her sidestepping the move. You notice she will sidestep on occasion, but this is an AI random reaction after being hit rather than dodging the action itself. This works on Radagon as well, as he won't block Night Comet. Night Comet is an awesome build, especially in larger arenas, because it has so much range that you can often use it from the safety of just being really far away, charging it, having that boost of 60% with two stabs of loss, and the reliability of it hitting pretty much every time. And as we go into phase two, we were rebuffing a few times because stuff like Hala Shabiri is short at 40 seconds, and Melania I think has close to 45, 50,000 HP between both phases on New Game Plus 7. Yeah, some of the bosses just have a ridiculous amount of HP when you finally do get to max scaling around Journey 8, and it is a little bit of a pain. I decided to take Melania to show off the build and the fact that I am not the most skilled Souls player, that's for sure. I'm just decent at it for the most part, and certain builds can just carry you through the game. Night Comet is no exception there. 
And by the way, in phase two, it's the same deal. It'll hit her, she'll occasionally sidestep, but just keep charging it, hitting her, waiting for the sidestep, and then hitting her again with Night Comet. You can stay pretty much a mile away, though she will be closer to you in phase two because she's much more aggressive in the second phase. The easiest way to beat Melania for me is probably Burno Flame because she has zero fire resistance and it's just an easy way to consistently knock her down. But if you just want to play basically chicken at this point and, and run around and uh, just hang back and keep hitting her, then it, yeah, it works out. I ended up getting really close with Waterfowl there. I'm not the best at dodging it, so I'd rather stay far away from it. And Melania ended up going down with Night Comet. Definitely one I recommend for everybody, and as far as Night Comet itself, it gets really powerful once you get closer to 200. Once you're around the 200 range, if you can max your intelligence, have 60 vigor, you're going to get a ton of damage out of it. Let's jump into equipment. For equipment, we have two Stabs of Loss. I had the Scavenger Curve Sword just in case I did want a little health proc it. I didn't end up doing that. Um, we have Godfrey Icon, Magic Scorpion Charm, Ritual Swords, Talisman, Graven Mass, Talisman, Faith Tier, and Magic Tier. This is the only one where I went with the glass cannon because other than Melania, the majority of bosses, you can pretty much hang a mile away and end up defeating them. So you shouldn't be hit too much with this build. We have 40 vigor, 25 mind. We did get to 80 intelligence. We're using golden vow, halish Shabiri, terror magic for our buffs. And of course, we're using the very powerful night comet. At number one, I chose the Blasphemous Blade for this video. The healing and ease of use truly puts it in the spot. It's so good that you could sleepwalk through Elden Ring on max scaling without much thought. The only one that can get in your way is the Fire Giant, and you can just switch to the Envoy's Longhorn for that with identical stats. The Blasphemous Blade's Ash of War, Taker's Flames, does reliable fire damage and heals you. This allows you to not have to use your health blasts as often, and the range is no slouch either. The majority of players will use this weapon at some point, with many stating it's too good. This is a PvE monster that <laughs> turns Souls games into a successful L2 simulator. The Blasphemous Blade is the god of all faith weapons and the most consistently good weapon Elden Ring has to offer. This fight doesn't even last long, but it's not just a matter of it not lasting long, it's the fact that we're consistently, most of the time, staying at full HP because the Ash of War is going to heal us all the time. This is an excellent weapon and it is very much easy mode. It truly is incredible. I know a lot of people think that bleed builds and everything do more damage. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff you can buff up to do more damage, but the reliability of the Blasphemous Blade, on top of the fact that it has relatively overpowered damage and healing, makes it the top one for me. Definitely sits at the number one spot. It is so easy to use the Blasphemous Blade. And because the Ash of War Taker's Flame scales purely with your Fate stat, you can throw in a whole bunch of different incantations and buffs too to add versatility to your build. And that's something that can add to the longevity of your playing time for Elden Ring as opposed to bleed builds which can get in my opinion a little bit more boring because you can throw in incantations with this. We have the Blasphemous Blade plus 10, the Urchery Seal plus 10, any armor set works. We have the Shard of Alexander, Fire Scorpion Charm, Ritual Sword, and Shield Talisman. We have the Faith Tier, Fire Tier. Let's jump into stats. Now for this we have 60 Vigor and 70 Faith. We're using Golden Vow and Halish Shabiri for our buffs and it's an absolute monster of a build. This is going to be something that can carry you through the whole game. And by the way, you can add incantations for bleed builds like Dragon Incantations, but you have the full versatility of a Faith build with something like this. We're going to show one more clip, but what I mean more or less is that you can switch to any of the seals in the game with 70 Faith, 80 with the Faith tier, and pretty much get good damage out of any of the incantations in the game aside from the ones that scale with Arcane, and then you only need a couple points of Arcane if you want to add that too. And Gideon here takes massive damage from Taker's Flames. I didn't end up including him in any of the other clips for any of the other builds because he's such an easy boss, so I figured I'd just add in a clip and show off Gideon as well with the Blasphemous Blade. Yeah, this weapon, I know some people, I've heard actually some people say that the Blasphemous Blade is overrated. This is something I've seen in a couple comments recently, and I think it's absolutely crazy because you're getting several thousand damage upon hit, you're healing consistently, and you can stay far back, really far back, and just run this build and destroy things. It's awesome. Anyways, a lot of people ask me what journey I'm on. We were jumping into Journey 28. And this is my farthest journey on any of my seven characters. By the way, at the end here, I did lose my voice a little bit. I did the whole voiceover for this one in one sitting. This one was a blast to do. I really had fun with this video, though. Probably one of my favorite videos in a long time. Thanks for watching this one. We did hit 20,000 subs this week. Honestly, I can't even believe it. It's been a crazy journey. This channel has made my life better in so many ways, and I appreciate everyone who watches my build videos.
Every day I get to wake up and look forward to this awesome community, and it has been an experience that has gone far past what I envisioned when it started. Once again, thank you all so much. Much love from me for the subs and support. As always, thanks for watching, and catch you guys soon.